Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Canadian Film Forecast for the week of October 12th. I'm your host, Priya Rao, and I'm joined by the lovely ladies of First Weekend Club. We have he right here in Toronto, Analea Boki. Hello. And then over in Vancouver, we've got Anita Adams and Catherine Brodsky. Hey, ladies. Hey. <laughs> Catherine's too cool to wave. <laughs> we know. We know. We're not cool yeah. anymore. <laughs> My reputation is shot. <laughs> there you go. Just like that. <laughs> well, we've got a lot of news to cover today, including what's new at the box office as well as on VOD. So let's start right away and head over to our Canadian film correspondent, Analea Boki. Thanks, Priya. Um, so the film Percy opened over the long weekend. It's about the Saskatchewan farmer Percy Schmeiser who who'd been using his own seeds for 50 years um, for his canola crops. And it's a method that his family had passed down for generations. But then he gets accused by Monsanto of stealing patented seeds, uh, when in fact it was neighboring seeds that blew in from the crops. And so he ends up taking the case to the Supreme Court of Canada, and it sets a great precedent. Anyways, it's a fantastic story starring Christopher Walken, Christina Ricci, Zach Braff, and Luke Kirby, and Adam Beach, of course. Um, so it, it opened over the weekend, but the Toronto screenings, because of the film, the cinema closures, uh, will be postponed and rescheduled. So keep, keep an eye out, out for that. Wow. Uh, that one's based on a true story, is it? Yeah, that's the true story. It's based, sorry, yes, that was a true farmer. His name is per Percy Schmeiser, and he ended up traveling all over the world and realizing that farmers all over the world were having the same issues. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen a lot of documentaries about Monsanto and how their crops and seeds have decimated local and rural uh, farmers. So this is yeah. interesting that it's not a it's not a documentary. No, um, sometimes they say real life uh, occurrences are best depicted by fiction films, so that you can actually do what you need to do to make mm. your point, kind of thing. Yeah, <laughs> but um, yeah, and who wouldn't want? You know, Christopher Walken to be to be. I want the cast. I want he, Christopher Walken to play me. He oh my plays God. The, yeah, he plays the farmer. He's perfect for it too. Oh my gosh, so perfect. Amazing. And we have Tapeworm. It released on VOD October thirteenth. It's a lo about a loosely connected group of nobodies who trudge through their pitiful existence. Now, this is a whole new genre that I've never heard of before. It's called cringe comedy. And Slam Dance calls it uh, a vibrant anti comedy bathed in the drab beige hues of Winnipeg. <laughs> so, obviously, it, it has um, an appeal for a, a specific kind of comedy. Um, and yeah. It sounds like the story of my life. <laughs> Which one, cringe okay. comedy or anti-comedy? Really both of them, but more cringe comedy, most okay. people would say. Yeah, watching me, yeah, cringe comedy. Oh my I'm God. cringing right now. <laughs> yeah, I get to <laughs> uh, Finally, no, uh, oh my gosh, finally, Body and Bones. It opens this Friday, October 16th. It's directed by Melanie Oates who actually was a wardrobe designer. She was on Meet, she did Mean Dreams, she did Little Dog, um, and this is her first feature film. It's got heart, it's raw, it's gritty, it's truthful, and it handles the cliche dynamics of a younger woman with an older man in, a, in an original way, and it's refle re refreshing and honest. Uh, Joel Thomas Hines' incredible performance, as well as Kelly Vanderberg, um, Priya is going to be doing a Q&A with the folks, I believe. Yeah, we'll be doing a Q&A with some of the cast and the director, Melanie Oates, on um, Monday, October the 19th. Might have my dates mixed up in my head, but we do have a Q&A coming up with that cast for sure. We also have a really great episode of Real Inspiration featuring Joel Thomas Hines, where he talks a bit about working on Body and Bones, as well as just about his career in general. It's a really great episode. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And we have that, you can find that everywhere on our firstweekendclub.ca uh, 
front page and on our YouTube and Facebook. Um, so just to let you know that it's an exclusive engagement in St. John's, Newfoundland at the Cineplex, Cineplex, oh yeah, Cineplex Mount Pearl and it streams as well online. So you can find all the details on our website. And both Joel and Melanie are from Newfoundland, so it's a nice hometown screening for them. Yeah, exactly. Thanks, Analea. Yeah. Thanks. And now for all the news on the industry, we will go to Catherine for the Brodsky Report. Thank you for transferring the baton, Priya. Um, so the Imaginative Film and Media Arts Festival is going to be running this year from October 20th to 25th. And Imaginative, if you're not familiar with it, it is the world's largest presenter of, of Indigenous screen content. And it looks to be, the festival looks to be like a mix of live events and live streams. And one of the live streams includes a keynote with Tantu Cardinal. Um, and if you want more details, that's at festival.imaginative.org. And also it has been announced um, that HireBIPOG.com, which is a new industry-wide initiative that aims to transform hiring practices in order to create a more inclusive workforce, it has surpassed 2,300 members in its first week of operation. So that's really impressive, good news. And the online roster, which launched October 5th, is an unprecedented collaboration between 20 plus Canadian media organizations, which include um, Canadian broadcasters like Bell Media, CBC Radio Canada, Chorus Entertainment, Rogers, and so on. And so from writers, directors, producers, and actors to editors, crew members, and executives, members are a mix of emerging, mid-level and established industry professionals. And so BIPOC TV and film is dedicated to increasing the representation of BIPOC uh, individuals, both in front and behind the camera. So if you wanna find out a little bit more about that, check out hirebipoc.com. And I'm returning the baton back to you, Priya. The baton or the talking stick as it might be. And I shall now pass that baton talking stick on to Anita for her picks and I hear we're going doc style this week. We definitely are Priya. I've got two good ones for you guys to check out. The first is The Skyjacker's Tale, which is a gripping documentary directed by Jamie Kastner. This film centers on Ishmael Muslim Ali, formerly uh, known as Ishmael Labit, who received a dispute disputed conviction of, of murder in the Fountain Valley Massacre of 1972 before hijacking a plane to Cuba in 1984. A gripping story, you, you must check this, uh, this film out, which is available on CBC Gem. The second film that I have for you, another fantastic documentary, Shark Water. This is a visually stunning documentary by the acclaimed and late filmmaker, Rob Stewart. Shark, shark water takes you into the most shark rich waters of the world, expo exposing the exploitations and corruption surrounding the world's shark populations in the marine reserves around the world. Uh, it is an, an effort to protect sharks and Rob Stewart, the filmmaker and his team, uh, he teams up with the renegade conservationist Paul Watson of the Sea Shepherd Conservation Society. And they've just made it their mission to put an end to hunting sharks. And it's a, it's a beautifully told, visually stunning film. Again, this film is available on CBC Gem. So check out these titles and get back to us and let us know what you think. Yeah. Uh, and I believe that film, Sharkwater, was also instrumental in, in reducing the amount of, um, or just the popularity of shark fin soup in a lot of places Please. and got shark fin soup banned in many, many cities and countries. So yeah. amazing work by the late yeah. Rob, for sure. Um, what a beautiful movie. And I have his coffee table book of the same name, Sharkwater, and it's just full of gorgeous, gorgeous photos and imagery. He was a, a brave, brave man standing there at the bottom of the ocean playing with the yeah. sharks. Yeah. 
just trying to bring awareness to, you know, sharks are a different creature than what we see in the movies, you know, like Jaws. I don't know about you guys, but I'm still afraid <laughs> to go in some water uh, bodies because of I'm Jaws. afraid of birds like <laughs> because of the Hitchcock movies. So. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, because I watched the movie, I don't have, a, I, I want to swim with sharks. I don't, I don't really, feel you don't like, have a fear. Well, yeah. I don't really have a fear of like a lot of different kinds of animals. Like I should have a fear of, but I'm afraid of like insects and things like that. <laughs> Tiny things. <laughs> Crawlies. Yeah. 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 Funny Priya, when you introduced Anita, you said, um, I misheard it as we're going to be like talking about ducks, not docks. And I'm thinking, Hmm. Movies? <laughs> What's that all about? I, I would love to see some films about ducks, docks, and fiction, to be honest. If you goose, but, uh, Canadian geese. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. Come on, you guys. <laughs> all right, ladies. That is it for us for this week. And uh, we look forward to seeing you next week when we'll have more news and more great movies to talk about. See you all next right. week. See you later, guys. Ciao. Ciao.